Overall, as we see reported by WCCF Tech, NVIDIA and AMD GPU pricing update for May 2022. GeForce graphics cards now 14% over MSRP and Radeon just over 6%. The latest NVIDIA GeForce and AMD Radeon GPU pricing update have been published by 3D Center and once again shows that we are a step closer to MSRP prices for gaming graphics cards. In the latest report by 3D Center, we can see that the GPU... All right, I think it's getting connected back up. This is not the right one. Okay, we're back. We got hit with something. Internet went off. They don't want crypto miners talking about GPU pricing. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get back into it. Let's just uh, wrap it from the beginning. So... Uh, GPU pricing is down. WCCF Tech reports NVIDIA and AMD GPU pricing update for May 2022. GeForce graphics cards now 14% over MSRP. Radeon at just 6% over MSRP. The latest NVIDIA GeForce and AMD Radeon GPU pricing update have been published by 3D Center and once again shows that we are a step closer to MSRP prices for gaming graphics cards. In the latest report by 3D Center, we can see that the GPU prices for both NVIDIA GeForce and AMD Radeon graphics cards continue to fall, which shouldn't be a surprise as the trend we have witnessed since the end of 2021. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series prices now average at around 14% over MSRP, while AMD's Radeon RX 6000 series averages with a selling price of 6% over MSRP. In addition to that, GPU supply is abundant and currently there is no retail outlet in the world that doesn't have graphics cards on their store shelves, which wasn't the case a few quarters back. The red and green teams have also announced various promos such as restocked and reloaded by Nvidia and AMD, also announcing how its Radeon RX 6000 series cards are available at MSRP levels. And then we have the chart that we've been following for a while here. And as you can see, back in May of last year, this time last year, we had NVIDIA GPUs at 318% over MSRP. And now it's just 114% over MSRP. Uh, AMD cards were around 216% at their peak. And they're down to 106%. It is important to note, because of the kind of timing of the releases of AMD and NVIDIA uh, GPUs on the last release schedule, you did end up having kind of this release where AMD's third board, third party, <laughs> third party board manufacturers kind of launched their MSRP a little bit above what you would traditionally expect from the pricing on their GPUs. So the MSRP prices are a little skewed. I would say they're even kind of over what they would have been if they were trying to remain competitive with um, NVIDIA at the time. That was a little different with their 6800 and 6800 XT and the 6900 XT initially, if you recall. But once you started getting into the 6700 XT releases and below, their MSRPs were extremely high uh, compared to the amount of performance you were really getting out of them. So they will need to even come down, in my opinion, below MSRP. They'll need adjusted MSRPs as well. So kind of that's that's my thoughts on it talking about amd prices first once again almost all graphics cards within the rx 6000 series are now available between plus one and plus ten percent of msrp it is only the radeon rx 6800 series cars they're still selling for an average of 30 to 35 percent over msrp this has been the case with these cards since their launch the NVIDIA lineup averages around 14% over MSRP, but it is just three cards at the moment, the 3050, the 3060 Ti, and the 3070, which are priced 20% over MSRP. And that's pretty interesting because nobody is picking up the 3050 for mining. The Enthusiast 3080 Ti can actually be found below the MSRP, which is impressive given that it offers performance similar to the 3090 Ti, which costs several hundred dollars more. 
Also, it's important because 100% um, <clears throat> hash rate unlock makes it a pretty beastly card at 125 mega hash a second with around 300 to 340 watts at the wall. That is pretty good. I think a lot of people start picking those up for mining if it gets more and more stable, of course, because there are still stability issues there. But it will make it a lot more enticing than a 3090. Why is it more enticing than a 3090 or 3090 Ti? Well, the reason is, is that it only has 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now, in a lot of cases, people will be like, well, isn't more RAM better? And yes, but no in this particular situation, because what you end up with on the 3090, for example, is that you get memory modules on the back of the GPU, which is much more difficult to cool, which actually interprets into, unless you do modifications to the GPU itself, less hash rate average, right? So you end up getting throttled memory just because you can't get those memory modules on the back cooled down. So getting the same bandwidth with less memory on the 3080 Ti is why we are seeing basically better performance out of the 3080 Ti on Ethereum with a 100% light hash rate unlock. It's probably why it was important for the light hash rate locks to come in early for NVIDIA there. We recently saw the AMD Radeon RX 6900 XT being sold at $100 US below its MSRP over at Newegg. There are just a few cards that are currently in demand and would take a few months or a few more months to hit their MSRP figures, but the vast majority of the RTX 30 and the Radeon RX 6000 lineup is currently being sold at normal prices. This along with prices now coming back or at MSRP means that GPU, the GPU market is out of the worst and prices and availability can now go back to normal. And I think if we are talking about this completely objectively, this is an exact repeat of the previous super cycle. And it's kind of playing out this way. So how should you start reading it, right? And I think you should start reading it as a worst case scenario that we follow the traditional super cycle. Now, a lot of people calculate these prices a little bit different with cryptocurrency, right? Some people say because of institutional money, we won't fall as far. We won't fall below the 30K. I'm not a TA guy. None of this is financial advice. Uh, other people say that you'll see the full percentage drop. So Ethereum, for example, would go down to 700. Uh, Bitcoin, even like... A, I mean, below 20K kind of thing. Uh, my perspective is typically going to be like following the previous all-time highs. We've talked about this before. So I would lean towards a 21K Bitcoin and $1,100 Ethereum. I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below as well as the chat. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.